arose a petal for every f planche attempt. Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Tyson and today I'm encapsulating everything to do with my 10 years of straddle planche training. Bit of background, I'm 178 centimeters tall. I was between 80 to 85 kilos when I did all this training in my 20s. And stay tuned till the end of the video where I offer my best suggestion of the ideal straddle planche training program. Let's get straight into it. So let's go way back in time. Ah, uh, that's a bit too far. Fast forward a bit. To 10 years ago in 2009, I began bodyweight strength training. In the beginning, I just played around with skills like back lever, iron cross, muscle up and planche. No actual programming, just attempting things. The first significant technical adjustment was ensuring straight arms after closely watching the elite rings gymnasts perform on the world stage. By 2011, I understood a proper planche was a horizontal position with straight arms. The next obstacle was the strength within that position. So over the next couple years, I continued my quite unrestricted planche training. And then the second significant change behind the straight arm revelation revealed itself. It occurred between late 2012 and early 2013 when I committed to two weeks of planche training. With that practice, I could advance tuck consistently, but my strength still failed me with the straddle planche. But there was a lesson learned from this failure, and that was, if I wanted to straddle planche, I needed to focus my training like I did, but for even longer. So I knew I needed to train more consistent, but what did I need to train? I felt like only training statics was limiting my progress. The answer? spending more time in a planche through a greater range of motion with a skill I call the planche negative. I credit this as the most important exercise for achieving the planche. Now, initially the planche negative was a very frustrating exercise. It involves not only a knowledge of planche technique, but also great control of the handstand, which I didn't have at the time. <sighs> this is the crux of my anger, this exercise. I can do it, I'm mentally prepared to do it, but physically my body won't let me because it keeps misbalancing. It's something you just got to keep working at and stay mentally strong for because this kind of stuff is going to happen when balance is involved and you've got a big It was only after some practice, practice meaning falling through the planche position again and again, that I could finally control the planche negative and that was when my planche gains skyrocketed. So in 2013, after six weeks of smashing planche negatives, I achieved my first straddle planche. Actually, my journey didn't end here. See, after the straddle planche, I held onto it and even tried to surpass it with many full planche attempts. And even though they were failures, it was these full planche attempts that taught me my next lesson in planche technique, the application of a hollow body position or a tucked pelvis. I realized, and it was discussed amongst my training partners at the time, the arched back you can see in my full planche attempts is self-limiting in that, yeah, you can get away with this technique if you're strong enough, but eventually, when you cannot perform the skill in more difficult variations or similar skills like the Maltese, the lower back, if arch, will be your weakest link, a marker of inactivation and not a demonstration of mastery of the position. So my next journey began to hold planche with straight arms and a hollow body position. And it was initially hard to incorporate this because the hollow body in a tuck and advanced tuck mechanics is already taken care of. 
so there's no practice in the easier variations. And due to the leg position in a straddle and a bent legged planche, it's difficult to make that mind muscle connection. Ironically, it's much easier in a full planche. Additionally, I didn't train the straddle planche much between 2013 to 2014, as these were actually my most active years as an Olympic lifter. And when I did train for planche, I would always set the full planche as the goal, because in my eyes I'd already achieved straddle, and I would progress to full by doing advanced tuck, then bent legged, then moving on to full, totally skipping out on the straddle progression. The last piece of the puzzle came in 2015 going into the Stronger Bodyweight Workout Series 2. After some self-analysis and discussion with Niall Wilson, who was helping me program for the series, I began to enforce shoulder protraction. Being aware of an accentuating protraction ensures the entire shoulder joint is in its strongest and most secure position for the planche. So combining it all together, I unlocked the straddle plant by understanding the technique behind the skill, which is straight arms, hollow body, and protracted shoulders, training with consistency, and utilizing the planche negative as my main progression. Okay, now you can do the fireworks. Thank you.